So you've done plenty of things that look at the intersection of two lines. This time we're going to look at the intersection of a line and a plane. So we could have the plane like this and a line that could go through the plane. So there's one possibility and we'd have one point of intersection. We could have a line that runs parallel to the plane. So there's no points of intersection. We could also have a line that's actually on the plane. So there's infinitely many points of intersection. OK, so here we've got an example. Uh, we're going to work out the intersection of this line with this plane. So let's just replace the equation for the line with the um, x, y, z vector. And then we can set out these Cartesian equations so that we've got um, what x, y and z would be in terms of lambda. Then if that line lies on the plane, we can substitute those x, y and z values into the equation of the plane and work out what lambda has to be, what, what value it would have. So continuing with uh, solving that equation, we get lambda to be minus 1. Once we've got that, we can substitute it into our equation for the line. And then it gives us the coordinates of the point where the line intersects with the plane. OK, this time we've got um, another line and a plane. So we'll go through the same process. We'll set out our equations for x, y and z, and then put them into the equation for the plane. Now the previous example gave us um, the intersection point between the line and the plane. It happened in one particular place, so that was a line that goes through the plane. This one's different. If you uh, multiply out those brackets and simplify, you get this situation where 1 equals 1. Now, since this is always true for any value of lambda, this means that the line lies on the plane. So there are infinitely many points of intersection. OK, in our third example, same again. We're going to set out our equations for x, y and z from the equation of the line and put them into the equation of the plane. This time when we simplify that we get this answer of 7 equals 1. Now of course that can never be true for any values of lambda, so there is no solution to that equation. There's no intersection. That means that the line is parallel to the plane. OK, now finding the distance of a point from a plane. One thing that you need to know is that uh, if you have the equation of the plane in Cartesian form, then you can get the normal straight from it by reading off those coefficients of x, y, and z. OK, now here's our plane, and here's our point A. We're going to find the distance from the plane, and we want the shortest distance, of course, so we need it to find that distance that's perpendicular to the plane. OK, we're going to call, uh, call that point P, where that line from the point to the plane joins the plane. So first of all, we'll need to find the equation of the line through A, and that is normal to the plane. Then we'll find what P is, so the point where that line intersects with the plane. And then once we've got A and P, we can calculate the distance between them. So we're going to find the distance of this point A from this plane. So set up what this looks like. We've got A to P like that. So first of all, the direction of AP is 1, 2, minus 2. So it's normal to the plane. And we just get that straight from the equation of the plane. Then R is our vector equation of the line AP. So we've got the position vector of A and the direction it's going in and then lambda multiples of that direction. Now we set that equal to x, y, z and we can work out the intersection of that line and the plane. We put those in for our equation of the plane just like we saw previously. And we work out that lambda has to be 8 ninths. So moving on from there, our position vector for P will be putting 8 ninths into our equation for um, the line. Now that from here, this is probably the way you're most likely to think, is um, to work out the length of AP, we'll do uh, subtract those two position vectors so that we can get the uh, vector of AP 
and then we'll find the modulus of that vector, like this. That gives us a final answer of 8,3. Now there is a slightly faster way to do this. If you think about the equation of the line, we've got A being the starting off point, and then it's 8 ninths times AP. Well, that 8 ninths times AP gives us that distance and in, in the right direction. So we can just skip straight to getting the um, vector for AP out of that equation. So it'd be 8 ninths times the length of our direction vector. Since we're moving in that direction from A to P and 8 ninths worth of that direction. So we can skip a little bit of the calculations there. Okay, now, just a note, I'm not going to go through an example of this one because it's fairly straightforward, but if you're asked to find the angle between a line and a plane, this is what you would do. So you've got this plane, here's the line. Now the angle between them, we usually talk about the acute angle. So we're looking for the, the smallest one, and it might actually be underneath the plane, depending on the situation you've got. Um, so what you need to know is that if you were doing the normal to the plane, that would be at 90 degrees. So to work out... Um, the angle between the line and the plane, you would get the normal from the equation of the plane. You'd work out the angle between the line and the normal. So on this diagram it's A, and you've done angles between vectors already. You'd use the scalar product on that. And then once you've got that angle, you would know that it's 90 take away um, that angle to get the angle between the line and the plane.